What's up, you guys? I'm joined with my friend Joe today. What's up, guys? My name's Joe. And today we are going to be talking about how to keep God at the center of your friendships. And if you're anything like me, this is something I wrestled with for a while growing up. I don't know about you. Nah, I didn't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like it, for me, like I didn't really have that many friends growing up either. And it was because I wanted to keep God at the center of my friendships. And it was something that people my age didn't necessarily value and didn't find value in. And so that's been something that's like been really hard for me growing up. But, you know, throughout the years, I've developed friends such as Joe and some other people, godly men that can hold me accountable, that can build me up and that can help me grow closer to the Lord. And so after learning all of this through the past couple of years, we wanted to bring you advice and tips on how to keep God at the center of your friendships, whether you're a guy or a girl. And so the first way that you can keep God in the center of your friendships is to find a community of friends or a core group of guys and girls that you can read your Bible with and break down scripture together. So for example, Joe and I are a part of a weekly Bible study um, that we join every single week with a group of guys and we're able to sit down to break down scripture. We're also reading a book in our Bible study and this book has scripture in it. And so we're able Able to allow the Word of God to transform our lives, but also have edifying and faith-building conversations together. And we also pray for one another weekly. So we talk about our highs, we talk about our lows, and we talk about what's going on in our life, and we're able to get prayer for one another, which is so important. That's like one of our super weapons that we have with a relationship with God. And so whenever, you know, we're going through something, we speak into each other's lives and we build each other up and encourage each other. And we remind each other who God calls us to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think something that the devil is really good at is trying to get ourselves to be isolated to the point where we feel like we have nobody. I've gotten the comment and the question so much, how do I find Christian friends? There's no Christian community in my area. Where do I go to find people who believe the same thing? And I think that is tactic number one for the devil is to get you isolated so that you don't have community who can pray for you, who can build you up, and to ultimately help you sharpen one another, right? Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And it, it's the truth for both men and women, right? In these types of friendships, you are gonna wanna surround yourself with the type of people who are going to build you up, mm -hmm. who are gonna sharpen you spiritually, who are gonna sharpen you physically, who are gonna sharpen you mentally, and ultimately help you to pursue God at the best speed and capacity that you can. Yeah, and if they're not doing that, I mean, the Bible also says that bad company corrupts good morals. So if they're not sharpening you in your relationship with God, if they're actually tearing you down and they're leading you away from the cross, leading you away from Jesus, then you need to identify who those people are and kind of distance yourself away from them in a respectful way. I, I mean, start speaking Jesus into their life and start finding other people to help encourage your, your life with Jesus, if that makes sense. I mean, if you're in a group of guys, I mean, if you're with a group of friends that they are pressuring you into doing something that you don't wanna do or is gonna be causing you to sin, then that's probably not a group of people, good group of people you wanna be around. But that doesn't mean that you can't stop being friends with them. That means that you're just gonna, you know, distance yourself a little bit. I mean, you can still talk with them, still have a good relationship with them. And then, you know, try to, try to be a, a Jesus-like figure to them. And just like, you know, if they come to you with questions, be, be respectful, you know, answer like, hey, I don't like doing those things. Like, and then they, they'll ask you why. So it opens up a conversation uh, with those friends that if you're like kind of pulling yourself away, they'll be asking questions and that opens up the conversation about Jesus and then hopefully they'll be led in the right direction that you're going as well. Right, yeah, that's a great point, Joe. Yeah, and I think a another important topic that I wanna to touch on is, you know, it's important to pray that God would bring people into your life to surround you, but it's important to take action on the prayers that you pray. I've seen a lot of people who, there's this meme that I see all the time. It's like me praying to God, asking for Christian friends, and then it's like me after service. And it's them getting up yeah. right away and walking yeah. out of church. I think it can be so easy, you know, for some people it's hard, like for me, I love making friends. Like that is just something I love doing, but for some people that's harder. And uh, I would say that's hard for me. Like it's hard sometimes, for me to make. sometimes I don't like, I, sometimes I just want to go straight home. Yeah. Take a nap. Yeah. After church nap. Mm -hmm. I don't really care to socialize. <laughs> I'll be honest. Sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to go hit the hay. There you go. And you know, I think it's, it's one of those things that's different for everybody. Like, like Joe, like sometimes he just wants to go home for me. I'm very much of a social bug. Like I'm always 
for are open to meeting new people and I think the most important thing is that you you take action on pursuing community you can pray for it as much as you want but if you don't take action and you know really step out to bring yourself into some of these communities and bring yourself mm -hmm. to some of these maybe it's a Bible study that you're thinking of joining but you're a little afraid you know you'll find a lot of the times the times that you actually don't step out in faith you miss on so much of what God has for you those are things you'll never know like mm -hmm. how fruitful they could have been and so taking action on prayer and taking action and stepping out into community mm -hmm. is really important and we look at Jesus' life and we look at his ministry, right? Jesus was around so many people all the time, performing miracles, signs, wonders, speaking into people's life, but he also had his main circle, yeah, right? right? He had his disciples who he was not only teaching, but he was praying for, he was building up. Mm -hmm. And then these guys, right, the disciples would go out and also preach Jesus to people as well. And it's important to have your main circle. It's important to have those guys or those girls that you go to to say, hey, like, let's go hang out, let's read the word together. Or, hey, I'm really struggling with this issue. Could you speak life in, into, into my life? And I think that leads us into our third topic is mm -hmm. find somebody who genuinely wants the best for your life. Yeah. And so um, there's been multiple times throughout the, I mean, we've been friends for what, three years? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been multiple times where I've called Joe or I've called another one of my friends just with like something that's been heavy on my heart or just something I'm fighting with and dealing with. And I've just been like, Joe, shoot it to me straight. Like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm dealing with. This is what's hard in my life. Might seem dumb to you, but this is real to me. Mm -hmm. Like, can you speak into my life? Can you tell me what you would recommend as a brother in Christ, the best direction to go in different circumstances. And he'll sit on the phone with me for a half an hour to an hour. And he'll just, he'll listen to me, he'll hear me out, he'll explain things. I mean, it's the same thing obviously with my wife, but but it's also important to have those guy friends that you can go to for situations and things like this. And that's what you would call seeking wise counsel. Yeah, yeah, so like whenever I go through a hard situation or anything like that, like. I don't like to just sit in my own thoughts and just start, my mind just starts racing. Mm -hmm. And like the first thing I'm gonna do is call somebody who cares about me. So like whether that's Jacob or somebody else in my family, my brother, my sisters, somebody who knows me, I'm gonna call them and they're gonna speak life into me and remind me who I am in Christ. And like when you speak those things out loud, a lot of the times it kind of sounds like ridiculous when you say it out loud and then when they reaffirm you they tell you the truth it's just like oh okay like i'm gonna be okay like mm -hmm. okay wow okay yeah i see it from your point of view like it's it's hard looking at your own situation by yourself and when you have other eyes looking in on the situation and giving you guidance and encouragement mm -hmm. it's super beneficial and helpful yeah yeah and uh, i think that brings us on to our next point is find people that you want to do life with Mm -hmm. So we, I, I would say, look at this from a long-term perspective. Like, is this somebody who's running the race of faith with you? This is somebody that you can get along with and you truly like want to do life with. I mean, we look at a lot of the Old Testament and the New Testament and we look at, you know, obviously our own lives. Like we want to be surrounded by people who are going to make us better. We're, yep. we're going to want to be surrounded by people who are going to encourage us, who are going to cheer us on, who we can do things with and find joy in being around. And so mm -hmm. I think it's important, especially for friendships. And this is something, you know, you always kind of have to gauge, but it's really important to think at the long-term aspect, right? And so mm -hmm. something that I would encourage you is look at the long-term aspect when it comes to making friends. Mm -hmm. Am I just settling to be friends with a group of people so, so I feel included because they believe in God? and that's it or am i surrounding myself with people who are constantly pursuing their faith who are interested in the same thing same things that i'm interested who are uplifting me and who i can genuinely see myself doing life with every single day and people that can just be down to earth like i want a friend who's going to call me when they see something that i do and they say um jacob like what was this you know they call me out because i want my life to continue to be edified so that I can hopefully paint a picture of the love that Jesus gives us mm -hmm. and that somebody else can see that and they can say, you know, well, why are you so joyful? Like, why do you love like this? I've never experienced this. And you know, we can say it's only because of Jesus and it's not because of us. Yeah. And like, I feel like when you, I mean, you're not going to find perfect friends. I mean, nobody's perfect. I mean, when you, when you look at a, a plant, when you look at a plant, I mean like you can't tell if this is fake or real. And, but when you do life with somebody, you get close to it and you like, look at it, you touch it. You're like, oh wait, this is fake. <laughs> like this plant is straight up fake. This person is fake. 
Um, from far away from where you, you guys are looking at, I mean, it may look real. Mm. Um, so, I mean, when you spend time with people, like, you'll get to know who the character is and if there's somebody who wants needs to speak into your life because you need to be careful in who speaks into your life because they they might you know tear you down that was a little plant analogy yeah, for you that's really good yeah you want people who are gonna speak life into you but also speak life about you um you know i dealt a lot of, with in high school and middle school i mean i know that was a while ago but <laughs> getting talked about behind your back is hard especially when you find out about it and you know, it's, it's really hard in today's day and age because you don't know people's intentions. Mm -hmm. But I think through prayer and through supplication, like Paul says in Philippians, you know, cast your anxieties on the Lord, he cares for you, and just be constantly in prayer about the people you're surrounding yourself with and constantly in check. And I think the more, I mean, you'll be able to see, uh, friendships are like relationships, right? I spend time with my wife, a lot of time with my wife, and because of that, I know who she is and she knows who I am and we love each other, right? Same thing with our relationships with our friends. Mm -hmm. I spend time with Joe, he spends mm -hmm. time with me, we get to know each other mm -hmm. and we generally get to enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes with our relationship with the Lord. We spend time with the Lord, he in turn spends time with us and we get to know God on an intimate and a deep level and truly see his character become revealed to us that he does care for us and he's got plans to prosper us and not to harm us, but for a hope in the future. Mm -hmm. And so that's something really important as well. It's like, is this person gonna pour time into your life? We talked about earlier today, quality of time and quantity of time. Yeah, it's like, did, yeah. you know, who are the people who are gonna not only spend a quantitative amount of time in your life where the people who are gonna be there for you and mm -hmm. you're gonna spend a lot of time around, but are they also people who are going to be there and mm -hmm. present when mm -hmm. they're spending time with you? And that time is quality as well. Yeah, I mean, time's precious too. I mean, like, I don't wanna be spending time with people who are gonna waste my time. I mean, if, they're, if they want something from me and I can just tell right away, I'm just like, and it's like for their own, like, selfish gain, I'm just mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. Yeah. You can kind of tell, like, like, like when you just do life with them, you'll, you'll get to know who they are. But like, it'll take time. Be in prayer, pray about it. Like I prayed all of middle school. I didn't have any guy friends middle school or high school. And like, man, it was hard, man. I prayed and prayed and prayed for God to send me a best friend. And he eventually did. And it took a long time, but. Proverbs 18, 24, I have it here. It says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that verse has been so good for me because I don't know about you, but I had a really close, I have a really close relationship with my brother. Um, yeah, I do too. Yeah. And like, I, I genuinely love the companionship that my brother brings me. I mean, we, anytime we see each other, we have so much fun. We love a lot of similar things. We love athletic things and we love talking about just so many different things. And I mean, that's so true. Like there are unreliable friends mm -hmm. who if you spend your time with and you sow your seed in that part of life, right? They will bring you to ruin. It's because they're influencing you in a bad way. We live in a world of so much influence. Like mm -hmm. it is crazy. We are constantly being influenced by everything around us. And it's like, yeah, if we surround ourselves with people who are not pursuing the Lord or who are not running the race with endurance every single day, they will bring us to ruin if they're not living godly lives, right? But it says in hope, there is one friend who will remain closer than a brother, right? And it doesn't just mean one friend, but what that means is you will have friends and it will seem like they are almost your brother. And that's what they are. Like mm -hmm. Joe's my brother in Christ, yeah. right? And like, if you're, you're a girl and you've got that one close girlfriend or that group of close girlfriends, like they are your sisters in Christ. And it's so important to remember the people you spend your time with, the place you sow your time, the result and the fruit that that's gonna bear is gonna be a byproduct of the situations you plant yourself in. But if you plant yourself in good soil, with good friends, people who are pursuing the Lord, the byproduct of that is going to not only be incredible faith, but incredible companionship and community that you could never get anywhere else. And so the last thing I wanna to touch on is, we briefly talked about Jesus in our circle. Mm -hmm. He had a close group of friends, and then he had the people he continued to minister to, and the people that he was also friendly with. And I think that's the important thing, to not get twisted. You know, you're gonna have a close-knit group of friends, and that's gonna be your main circle, just like Jesus had his main circle with his disciples, right? And some of the disciples, they still betrayed him. I mean, we read this in the scriptures, but I think Judas. it's- <laughs> But I think it's also important to remember, like, you are called to be a light 
and a friend to everybody you come across. And I think, you know, there's a difference between pursuing like deep Christ-like friendship with a close circle and also being friendly to those around you. And this is where it's really cool. Your friendship to whoever it may be can be a light that the Lord can shine through and that ultimately he can speak life into other people's lives because of your obedience. There's gonna be times, like Joe talked about, you might find yourself around people or around a person and ultimately they're gonna lead you to ruin or lead you down a path that you don't wanna be on, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't still speak life into them. That doesn't mean that you can't still be friendly with them and help them come to know the Lord and speak life into their own life but you always have to constantly have your heart on guard. What are their intentions for my life? What kind of path are they headed down? Is this somebody that I wanna have my heart and my soul poured into when at the end of the day, it's going to hurt me more than help me? Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. So anyways, the important thing to remember about this is keep your heart on guard, seek God in all of this. And remember, if you keep God at the center of your life, he will bring you friends. He will bring you people who will um, uplift you and build you up. And so, and so I hope we encourage you today on how to keep God at the center of your friendships. I pray that you guys will continue to grow and flourish in your friendships. And ultimately that Christ would shine so brightly through the group of friends you hang out with. So I hope this impacted you. I hope this helps you. And uh, yeah, y'all, we love you guys. We'll Adios. talk to you guys later. See ya. Peace.